Before daybreak, Libby Riddles is up and trying to get a head start on the other mushers. Those guys always say they can catch you, but, you know, sometimes they don't. I'm taking a chance going out this morning in this kind of weather. It might uh, be kind of tough on my leaders and stuff, but right now I'm at the point where I got to either take a chance or to heck with it, you know? Got to do it. And as she is pulling out, the master tactician, Rick Swenson, is pulling in, not the least bit concerned with her departure. I was really surprised to get here and uh, find out that everybody wasn't gone. I'm not afraid of anybody getting away from me. I'm afraid of somebody catching me because of the weather. So as Swenson rests, a host of others make their way out onto the coastal tundra. Experienced mushers like John Cooper and Dewey Halverson I pulled out of Unilacleet early in pursuit of Libby Riddles. Even the Yukon River Fox, Emmett Peters, has decided to make a run for the front. By early afternoon, everyone is asking just one question. KL7 TK calling KL7 Alpha Alpha, KL7 Alpha Alpha, KL7 TK. Uh, we're calling to request the uh, status of uh, the musher Rick Swenson. I wonder if you could fill us in on that, please. Roger. Hi, show team number one three, uh, Rick Swenson, out of this checkpoint. It's Approximately four hours and 25 minutes behind the leader, team number four six, uh, Libby Riddles, uh, over. At three in the afternoon, Swenson is back on the trail, but he has his work cut out for him as there are eight mushers ahead of him, and the leader, Libby Riddles, has opened up a six-hour lead. But that advantage is in jeopardy as Riddles pulls into the village of Shaktulik. Increasing coastal winds are causing ground blizzards. The surface snow is blowing at upwards of 40 miles per hour and visibility is dropping. After consulting with partner Joe Garney, Libby decides to take a chance and heads out into the storm. She is hoping to put the worst of the storm between her and the competition. Meantime, 300 miles up the coast, Nome is getting into the swing of the Iditarod. But I guess that's just par for the course. How about a big hand and a big cheer out there for all the mushers on the Iditarod Trail? Huh? Everybody's having a party, but not the mushers. I did, I did, I did the Iditarod Trail. Come on. Libby spent the night camped out on the trail, and by morning, her game plan had paid off. The brunt of the bad weather had passed her by, and with visibility improving, she can easily follow the trail. 20 miles behind her, though, it's a different story, as John Cooper and Dewey Halverson are stopped dead in their tracks. The ground storm has iced over the fur around their dog's eyes. The leaders can't see and don't particularly care to run headstrong into the wind. The first half of this was just horrible. I sure hope we got a dog team left by the time we get there. Also in the storm is Rick Swenson. He has moved into fourth place, but is still losing time to Libby Riddles. She has just arrived in Koyuk in good condition, 24 hours after making her dramatic nighttime run into the heart of the storm. When it got dark, I had lots of trouble seeing the trail. Just what made it so bad is that it was kind of wet snow and uh, the wind, and I kept kicking myself in the butt and saying it was the stupidest thing I ever done, but I didn't think about turning back. And by the next morning, it was clear to everyone that Libby would be a tough riddle to solve. Jim Brewer with you on KICY's Breakfast Show. We're going to send this song out to Dwayne Halverson and John Cooper, chasing after Libby Riddles on the Iditarod Trail. Last year, car makers spent a record. By the final hours, exhaustion, fatigue, and despair have conquered many of the mushers. But at White Mountain, a refreshed Libby Riddles is preparing herself and her team for the stretch run to Nome. Last haul, guys. Buy you guys sirloin steak and a box dog biscuits each. Get up, dog. You ain't tired of the spirit of this race. You can set this trail on fire. You were born unto the race. Your dogs are just the same. You were made for the winner's circle. It runs inside your veins. 
Five hours back, Cooper and Halverson are still giving chase. They're working together, desperately trying to gain ground. But behind them, pre-race favorite Rick Swenson has conceded. Oh, I lost the trail right at dark. There's a section there where it must have been some overflow came in or the wind blew all the snow away or something. And uh, I guess that pretty well blew my chances of winning. That's the way it goes. As dawn breaks on day 18, Libby Riddles can see history on the horizon. Dewey Halverson has made up three and a half hours, but is still two hours behind. And John Cooper has settled comfortably into third. And down the trail at the finish line in Nome, the wake-up call has gone out early. And at 6 a.m., the streets are filled with people waiting to welcome Alaska's new first lady. With nine miles to go, there are no more questions, only answers. Libby Riddles will be the first woman ever to win the Iditarod. Despite a courageous dash from White Mountain, Dewey Halverson will have to settle for second. At the finish line, mushing legends are gathering for the grand finale. Last year's winner, Dean Osmar, Joel Reddington Sr., who was forced to scratch from this year's race, and Libby's boyfriend, Joe Garney, are all gathered to share in her momentous trip down Front Street. Libby receives $50,000 for a victory, and her two lead dogs, Dugan and Axel, each get a golden harness to commemorate the occasion. Two hours later, Dewey Halverson finishes second, and four hours after that, John Cooper claims third. And what about Guy Blankenship? With the aid of his handicap, he captured seventh. And Tim Osmar, Miss Rook of the Year honors, finishing a respectable 13th. And all of those who make it to the finish line in Nome receive a ceremonial belt buckle and traditional patch. But material goods are not the reason. These mushers have run the race. The thing is, it's just me and the dogs against um, the Alaskan tundra, if you like. You know, it's the man and the dogs, no machines, no help. Just you getting the thousand miles. You know, it is the, the greatest race on earth. And just getting there, I think everyone who gets there is a winner. And so it is that Monique Benet, who finished last, can return to France a winner. Along with all the other men, women, and dogs who completed the 1985 Iditarod, the last great race.